Hello everyone and welcome to Don't Be Bored, where today I am reviewing Get On Board, Paris and Roma. This is a sequel and it's standalone, completely standalone from the original Get On Board, which was New York and London. I'm going to go through how the game plays if you've not played it at all, as well as highlighting to those who have played the original, what are the slight differences here, and then we're going to go on to my thoughts. Just know that this was provided to me by Coiled Spring Games for the review. So Get On Board is a flip and place game. So it's in that roll and write, flip and write genre, though in this you're going to be flipping cards from a deck that's going to give you a sort of pattern of sticks that you're able to then put down, sticks being these routes that you're Metro, your bus basically is taking around this place. If you're playing with one to three players, you're going to be on the Rome side of the board, and with four and five, you're gonna flip the board over and be in Paris. Note that you can't say play on the Paris side, at least within the official rules, with only two players. The way the gameplay works on a round, the conductor, basically whoever's got the special start player token, is going to take the top card from the ticket deck and turn it over. It will have a number, and then you'll look at the top of your score sheet, and that will tell you how many of these sticks you're putting down and how many turns they must have. Now this is going to be different for each player, so if you flip over, say, the number one, your one might be a different shape in terms of it might have uh, two sticks in a straight line, whereas your opponent might have three sticks with two turns, or maybe they've just got one stick, or two sticks but with a turn, etc. So while everyone by the end of the game will have played the exact 12 different routes down in terms of the combinations, well, they're not going to be doing them on the same turn, or at least within the same round. Once you've worked out what you're going to be doing, from your starting location, like one of the metros across the board, which you have predetermined in setup, you will place your sticks down. So if you have a turn, you'll put one down, and then maybe the next one going left or right. And it's a turn, but it doesn't tell you which way you have to turn. Now there's a few caveats. You can't go back to where you've already been. You can't effectively put some kind of loop into your route that actually ends your game and eliminates you. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to be penned in. You also have to use the amount of sticks, the amount of parts of the route that are predetermined by that number. You can change the number of turns, though for every one you either subtract or add to it, so say it's three in a straight line is what you've got to add, and you curve it at the end, so you've got straight, straight, and a turn, well, that is going to cost you some minus points at the end of the game, and you can only do that so many times as well. You might want to, though, because along the way you're trying to pick up a range of people. You're going to score points for metros that you've visited, and you can even cross a metro off later on to add an additional stick onto the end of your route. That's quite helpful as you can do that once at the end of each round. You're going to pick up grannies, which generally just build up in points. Schoolgoers, well, they're going to also want to be near theatres, so they're going to times up. So how many of the schoolgoers times up how many theatres your route is on. Next up are the flirts. Now you want to collect them in sort of a dark purple and light purple pairings because if you do that you'll fill your sort of part of your metro up that bit easier and then when you get to the sort of purple buildings you'll drop off that row and hopefully score a bucket full of points. Next up are tourists. Yeah, also going to want to be picked up but they don't need to be selected in pairs. As you pick them up they'll fill up your current row your, of your, uh, your metro, and when you hit one of the two different types of tourist destinations, you'll drop that row off, and they build up in points quite quickly depending on how full that sort of bus is. One twist from the original, which had like busy routes, are these popular areas. Now, when you're playing with two and three players, some of the yellow parts of the board or the burgundy parts of the board are special spaces which get you, push you around this track depending on how many you've done, as well as whenever you place a stick alongside one of the other player's sticks. So you can push around this track to gain points. 
Basically, they're areas that, well, they want a lot of connections to. The last ways to score points are by the public and private objectives. The private ones, well, they're not all that private. They are on show, but basically show three different metro stations that your route should wiggle around to at some point, and you'll score points depending on if you hit one, two, or three of them that are indicated on your card. And the public ones are not quite first come, first serve, but whoever completes them first, let's say it's pick up five tourists, Whoever's picked up five tourists first, they're going to score 10 points and then you flip it over and there's a lesser amount of points for everyone else to score that objective still. And well, that's all the different ways you're going to be trying to score points. And the way it runs out is each round you flip over a card, you're going to be adding that sort of root part onto the board, everyone on that middle board. And once that pile of tickets runs out, it's game over. So there's basically 12 rounds. So your game does, to some extent, matter on the player count because the rounds aren't simultaneous, so you can work out where you're going. Because in this, this version at least, it's never detrimental to go where someone's been before, unlike in the other one. And that's roughly how you play, so let's touch on the game. Now, first of all, let's talk about the components. This is the scoring sheet, and while it does look relatively busy, to be honest, it's actually very easy to use once you're in the game. Depending on where you're picking up, it's got a different coloured area, it's got different bits for the negatives, and there's some nice little extra little bits. For instance, in the negative area, there are pluses between the numbers, and that just, I think, helps you know it's not whatever the biggest um, number is that I've achieved, you do add these negatives up. I think that's just a nice little bit so you know how it's going to score. One of the quirkiest parts is probably the tickets themselves. It's like they've been torn, but like that's the type of cards. The card shape is really distinctive with this sort of gouge into it. It makes it quite we feel weird shuffling them, but you're only shuffling 12 cards, so it's not too much of a problem. But it's just, it makes them really sort of look like a ticket that's been used and torn by the conductor to say, yep, I've seen you, you've had that ticket, I." ripped it, it's a used ticket, so you couldn't go and hand it off to someone else. I, I just thought that was a, a, a nice thing that they carried over from the sort of original, that quirkiness, I thought that was quite a cool bit of production quality, even though it's 100% not necessary. One thing that does surprise me is that they didn't put a range of time on the box. It says 30 minutes, and that is definitely achievable, but as I alluded to, it does differ somewhat depending on the player count. At two, I did actually manage to teach the game and play it in about 30 minutes, pretty much, which for getting a new game to the table, though both players had played the original, so it was more of a refresher, but still getting a new game to the table, touching up on the rolls, and then finishing scoring and everything in 30 minutes, with 30 minutes on the box, is quite surprising. But as you add players, there's not much going on simultaneous. Yes, you can plan your routes out simultaneously. When one person's putting their tracks down, you can be as well. And because you're not blocking spaces on that central board, and in this one, you're not penalized. In fact, you're almost incentivized to go where other people are. It does mean that you can plan your route out. Maybe you'll adjust it as people put stuff down, but it's not, I can't do that anymore. So yes, it's not going to increase massively, but you're definitely getting more time just as more players are sat around the table. And that is going to lead me quite nicely into my biggest issue with the original and my biggest issue with this version is that there's two maps, but you are only going to be playing one. I really hoped they'd learnt from the original which had the exact same thing of, depending on your player count, you play on one side of the board or the other. I really wish there was a way that it was just this part of the board isn't used when you're using uh, with two and three players, but then four and five, it's sort of this side bit of, uh, of Paris is now available. I think that would have just been a nice thing that you could use more maps, have that bit extra variety. 
and I'm surprised they didn't do it, to be honest, because I think a lot of people didn't like that about the original, and I think it's going to be the same here. But with two and three players, you can't, officially at least, play the Paris side. And that just feels a bit odd, because it's sold so much as the two places, and it really could have been done and designed slightly differently to then allow both sides of the board to be used, even if it was only with a lower player count. I feel like that's something they should have done. The core to get on board is a nice solid puzzle and it's, it sort of drags you in because you know by the end of the game you'll have used the exact same straights and turns, these little sort of stick pieces, you'll have used the exact same number from that ticket deck. But there are multiple ways for you to try and score. First of all, are you going to take those negative points to change some straights into turns just to pick up those extra people? Are you going to focus on your personal objective and hit those three metros? Are you going to forget some of those? Maybe hit one, but just go and collect a load of the school um, children and hit the theatres so you can get that massive multiplying score there. Are you going to maybe forget about them? Hopefully, if you are, they're not the private or the public objective, sorry. So there's many different ways to get points and it's a nice satisfying bit in this where you turn that ticket over and it's like, okay, for me, that's this shape. Okay, how am I going to best use that? Right, it's it's a three but with two turns. Oh, I was hoping to go forward twice, but maybe I could sort of do a bit of a U shape in this bit and then next time I can still hit that landmark where I'm trying to drop my tourists off. That sort of thing. I, I like that logic and the way all of the different people score, it means, okay, I've not got many grannies, so it's almost worthless me towards the end of the game going off in this direction to get one, because it'll only be worth one point. Whereas if I've got loads of them, maybe one granny is worth three points. Yes, grannies can build up in their points. So you've got multiple routes to victory, and there's just something quite satisfying about your route snaking across the board, regardless of which city it's in. And when you've got all of the other routes, by the end it does you know, make almost like one of those metro underground sort of maps sort of overlaid over the, uh, the city. And I think it does look very cool at the end. So apart from being different cities, the twist in this is that instead of roads getting busy and you taking negative points for going where other players have been, you actually sort of almost get rewarded for it. And I... I don't know. I liked the restrictiveness of that in the original. At the same time, it feels a bit friendlier. If you're the person that's almost that one or two um, sticks behind because of your starting metro was just over here, but you're then both trying to go roughly to the same area, it felt kind of almost a bit punishing. Right, I, I'm just going to have to follow them and take loads of these negative, busy routes. Uh, negatives in the original, whereas in this it's like, oh, I'm gonna actually try and follow you a little bit more because then I can get these bonus points. It's different. It could have just been the same, but it does mean that the two sort of experiences feel different. I don't think it's enough for you to necessarily own the two unless it's your favourite game. Then it's more sort of, well, it's a new cool map and some slight different scorings. They're quite similar though, but the difference is the original Get On Board, the London and New York one, that just felt a little bit more restrictive in terms of, ah, oh, these haven't blocked, these pieces haven't blocked this route, but they've certainly made it bad for me to do it. Whereas now it's, oh, you've put sticks there. It's almost incentivizing me to put some of my route sticks there as well. And some people will vibe with one more than the other. I think, personally, I like the restrictiveness of the original a bit more, but this maybe is a bit more family-friendly as a result. But hopefully that has helped you work out if Get On Board, Paris and Roma is for you. It's a solid, not flip and write, not roll and write, but flip and place, where you're all doing something on a central board, 
In this one, it's that bit more family friendly, like I just alluded to, in terms of you not blocking each other off. If anything, trying to get somewhere first might mean the other person scoring some bonus points along the way. There's many sort of ways to score points. And yeah, fun little game. Certainly the fact that you can fit it into a lunchtime. I just wish both maps were playable, even if it was, say, only at a lower player count. And yet they're not. That is Get On Board Paris and Roma. Please check out other reviews and stuff on the channel. There's news, reviews, how to plays and much more. And until next time, have a great day gaming.